In this video, we're going to go through an extra subtle feature of the E2 reactions, and we'll talk about bulky bases. And before we actually introduce the bulky base itself, let's just sort of make sure that we're clear on just an ordinary E2 reaction, which I've drawn up here. Remember, one of the key things to keep in track of the E2 reactions is certainly the stereochemistry of the starting material that you're working with, the substrate, although that's not going to be important here for bulky bases. The other thing is that we always want to follow, as much as possible, Zaitsev's rule. So remember Zaitsev's rule, we always want to form the more substituted alkene because more substituted alkenes tend to be more stable. And really, if you want to be a little bit more picky, the transition state leading to more substituted alkenes is lower in energy. So let's just number out everything here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. What do we get from this from this reaction? Let's say NaOCH3, this alkyl bromide. We get this alkene, and we get NaBr and HOCH3 as byproducts. Notice this is a Tri substituted alkene. What do I mean by tri substituted alkene? Notice how many carbons are attached directly to the alkene. One, two, three. Tri substituted. Okay. And we want to form the tri substituted alkene and not the alternative mono substituted alkene because that would be less substituted, less stable, right? Well, there are cases, and this is one case you need to think about, where if we choose a slightly different base, and I'm gonna show this base as we draw it out, O minus CCH3, CH3, CH3, we can get a different product from our elimination reaction. So instead of getting the tri substitute alkene as our major product, we get, in this case, the mono substituted alkene. And that is our major product. And we might get also some of the tri substitute alkene as a minor product. And the key factor here is our choice of base. Notice this base is attached to a carbon, which is attached to three carbons. This is a tertiary alkoxide. This goes, and it may also sometimes be written O T B U minus, because oxygen attached to a tert butyl group. You may also see this as O C C H three three minus. All of these are equivalent, and you'll of course want to have a some kind of, of cation attached to it, which doesn't participate in the reaction. It can be Na plus or K plus. Really, for our purposes, does not matter which one. So this is called the T-butoxide ion, and this is an example of a strong, bulky base. And oh yeah, as another note, you may also see it in the alcohol as the solvent. So you might see NaO TBU in the presence of TBUOH. So that's just the solvent, doesn't really participate in our reaction here, it's just dissolving. Okay, so what's special about OTBU? Well, it's like I said, it's bulky, it takes up a lot of room. And so when we do the E2 reaction, remember we have to remove a proton from the carbon. Remember, here's our alpha carbon, the carbon attached to the bromine. And we have to remove a proton from the carbon next door, so the beta carbon. So when we have our normal NaOCH3, it can remove a proton from carbon two to give us our Zaitsev product. When the case of a bulky base like NaOTBU, the we start to hit something called steric hindrance. And actually, I'm going to draw this out a little bit more detail so we can see exactly what's happening. Steric hindrance is going to make the formation of the more substituted alkene less favorable. 
So if we draw a Newman projection, let's just one, two, three, four. Let's draw a Newman along carbon two to carbon three. So here's my eye I'm sighting along carbon two to carbon three. And carbon two to carbon three, we want to make sure that our hydrogen and our bromine are anti-periplanar, right? Don't have to worry so much about stereochemistry. Just need to make sure that everything's in the right place here. Um, so the hydrogen would have to be up, the bromine would be down, and we could draw a CH3 here and a CH3 here, CH3, CH3. Uh, I haven't drawn out the wedge line di diagram so much. We haven't specified stereochemistry, so I apologize if this seems like it's gone really quickly. Um, but we've gone through other examples where drawing out Newman projections on E2s has been done before. So if that seemed unclear to you, maybe we should go back to look at some of those, that one video on forming uh, Newman projections in the E2. Okay, and of course I made a mistake. So let's have a look. Let's hydrogen here. Okay, so our base, our bulky base, would have to approach this hydrogen and you know, it would be next to the CH3 and CH3 here. So there's there's going to be actually significant amount, if we draw it all out, of C, CH3, CH3, CH3. So this these lines, these brackets here, indicate what we call steric hindrance. So the CH3 on this carbon is going to start to bump into the bulky base and this is going to this is what we call steric hindrance not so much a, a problem if it's just a CH3 but if we have a tert butyl then it starts to become an issue so this is going to be actually less favored so that is, is going to lead to less of our um, Zaitsev product which is our minor product down here now instead if we were to remove this proton, so we'd look down this from C4 to C3, so Newman of C4 to C3, what do we have? Well, we have a methyl group, and uh, let's actually make sure we draw that a little bit further down. So we have a methyl group, hydrogen, 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 bromine, and what's on the group next door? Well, there's a hydrogen, and on carbon two, there are two methyl groups, so it's an isopropyl group. And now here, look, our base, our OTBU minus, only has to take a proton away from a primary carbon, so this is this is a primary carbon, whereas this was a tertiary carbon. And it's, it's a lot less sterically hindered. Exclamation point. So the CH3, the T-butoxide, is removing a hydrogen from the CH3. And it only has to bump, it's only going to bump into other hydrogens. So there's a lot less steric hindrance here. And this is going to lead to, uh, so this is going to be a more stable transition state. More stable transition state, which is going to lead to more of our mono-substituted alkene product. Okay, so that is what we have here. We've got our chert butoxide is just we're going to remove a proton from our methyl group and it's gonna to lead to the less substitute product. So this is really the only bulky base you need to worry about. So when you think bulky base, really it's just T-butoxide, keep that one in your mind, um, then you'll be fine. You always wanna form the, form the less substituted alkene when you're using a bulky base. So if you have a choice between forming the Zaitsev and the anti-Zaitsev, if you will, then you form the anti-Zaitsev or the non-Zaitsev.
You might also sometimes hear this referred to as the Hoffman product, which is the less substituted alkene. Um, and so that really is the, the key thing. You know, one other bulky base you may see sometimes, but uh, I doubt you'll see it in this context, is also LDA, lithium diisopropyl amide. But the, mo the most important bulky base by far is tert-butoxide. So just the bottom line is you always want to form a less substituted alkene when using a bulky base in the E2 reaction.